Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we are gonna talk about two of the eight sensory systems, the gustatory system and the olfactory system. We are going to combine these two senses into one video because they are so closely connected and we're going to give you six of our favorite activities you can do to stimulate these senses. So the first one we're going to talk about is the olfactory system, which is basically your sense of smell. And then we're also going to talk about the gustatory system, which is your sense of taste. And like Rachel said, these two senses are directly connected to each other. So the olfactory system is actually deemed one of the oldest, olfactory, oldest, get it, <laughs> one of the oldest <laughs> sensory systems. So bad. And the gustatory system is designed to help keep us safe and identify if food should be ingested or not. So let's dive into some of the challenges that we see when children struggle to process and modulate olfactory and gustatory input. So the different smells and the different tastes. The first one is extreme picky eating. Now, a lot of children, most children, go through phases of picky eating, eating through normal development, but this extreme picky eating is consistent throughout childhood and can be a sign of challenges for processing olfactory and gustatory input. Another one is not tolerating these different smells to the point of the child is having an adverse reaction. So let's say you make pancakes in the morning and the smell in your house smells like pancakes or I don't know there's a unique smell when you cook like when That's you true. turn on the the iron or what is it the, the what oven? is it no the uh the fry pan the waffle maker what is that called <laughs> So call the, the waffle, waffle maker. maker. When you turn on the waffle, it's maker, the waffle maker, it's a very distinct smell. Can you tell I'm a little sensitive to olfactory? <laughs> but, but the child might have a severe adverse reaction to a certain smell in the house to the point that it's impacting their ability to just get through breakfast or just be able to get dressed for the day or complete their routine. So when it is impacting their ability to just get through daily activities, that is when it is a potential red flag. Now the opposite of that would be a child who seeks out certain smells. Maybe they are constantly smelling objects in their environment, seeking out that strong olfactory input. And again, it's impacting their ability to get through their day. So it's impacting their ability to focus and attend at school because they're so busy seeking out certain smells. Going along with that is seeking out certain foods, certain food flavors, textures, spiciness, sourness, seeking out these certain foods so that it's impacting their ability to eat a well-rounded diet. That is another potential red flag that we need to be aware of. Before we dive into our favorite activities to address the olfactory and gustatory systems, we wanna make sure that you know that if your child is having these struggles to the point where it's impacting their ability to get through their day, to seek out an occupational therapy evaluation. Also, this is not an exhaustive list. There are lots of different things to be aware of when it comes to olfactory and gustatory sensory processing and modulation. We will link a checklist, a sensory preference checklist in the description if you want to have more of an idea of what to look for when it comes to these senses. Yep, so these activities we're about to share with you are perfect for children who maybe aren't struggling significantly with these senses, but it's also perfect for kiddos who do struggle. All right, let's dive into our favorite activities. We're going to do six activities for you to try, three for olfactory and three for gustatory. So we're going to start with olfactory, which again is your sense of smell. The first activity is a scented sensory bin. So we love using rice and putting a couple of drops of essential oils. Now you can use the essential oils based on the goal that you want to achieve. So scents like lavender, vanilla, wild orange, those can be considered calming scents. Or on the flip side, we can do some more alerting scents. So things like lemon or peppermint could be considered alerting. Now with these, you wanna be cautious of skin allergies. You wanna make sure that you're using less and a little bit goes a long way and make sure that you're using a therapeutic grade essential oil. We have always used Oterra. That is just the brand that we're comfortable with. So put a couple of drops into a sensory bin and then let your child play with it. 
Number two is to use calming scents on the wrist or on a scrunchie around the wrist. So this is gonna be continuing to use essential oils and like Rachel said, making sure it's therapeutic grade and watching out for skin allergies. So if you use a diluted essential oil is best and putting a little bit, just like one little tiny drop or using a roller on your child's wrist of a scent that they like, that they feel calm using that can be a great strategy. Or if you don't wanna put it on their skin, grab a scrunchie and put a drop on the scrunchie and then they can have that same olfactory input, just not on their skin. We like to call those scented scrunchies. And now I do wanna say when you are diluting the essential oils, we recommend using something like fractionated coconut oil, which is liquid coconut oil. It helps, uh, helps the essential oil get into the skin safer and to prevent any harmful skin reactions if there were to be an allergic reaction or anything like that. So fractionated coconut oil, olive oil, some sort of oil to help dilute the oil to uh, make it a little bit safer. Number three is to play a scent matching, matching game. Our favorite is called Follow Your Nose and you can find this online. It's a super fun interactive game that you can play with you and your child or you can play with a group of children. I love Follow Your Nose. If you don't have the game or you don't want to get the game, you can use a variety of different scents in your house. You can go to your spice cabinet and pick out some different spices and put a blindfold on and really work on just that sense of smell and identifying what the smell is or matching two different smells together. You can get creative with this one and it's it's a fun challenge, but there can be a lot of potential overstimulation from this. So just make sure that you're providing that deep pressure proprioceptive input afterwards to help regulate the nervous system. Now let's dive into our activities for the gustatory system. And the first one is to play mouth imitation games. Now, while this doesn't specifically work on your sense of taste, it does work on your oral motor registration, which is your ability to feel and process things that are in, on, and around your mouth. One game that we love for this is called Super Duper Publications. They have an oral motor deck. So if you're struggling to figure out, well, what facial expressions should I make? How should I move my tongue? Like, what, what do you guys mean? Like, this is weird, okay? This card deck you can purchase. We'll link it in the description. And it just is silly faces of kids making different movements with their tongues and their cheeks and their tongues. <laughs> Because they have multiple tongues. But yeah. You get what we're saying. It's an awesome game to help guide you, and we've used it in therapy. It's fantastic. Now, a quick example of just a mouth imitation game that you can play would be in front of the mirror at home, and you make a silly face. I don't know, make a silly face. And then your child has to imitate <laughs> it, whether they're looking at you in the mirror or they're looking at you straight on and they make the silly face and then look at the mirror at themselves. It's a great way to get a lot of great visual feedback. Another game that we love to work on, again, the oral motor skills, the gustatory processing is Bubble Mountain. We've talked about Bubble Mountain before. It's fantastic, super motivating, super fun. And you do get a lot of olfactory and gustatory input simultaneously with this one because you have to smell the bubbles. You can put essential oils into the water as well. You can be creative with this one, but you're just going to stick your straw in the bowl with soapy water and blow a bubble mountain or a volcano, whatever you want to call it, whatever is motivating to your child. Oh, well, bubble mountain is motivating for pretty much every single child. Oh, including me. And for the adults <laughs> too, it's super fun. All right, our last activity is going to be a sour spray. Now sour spray is can be a really fun activity to just use for a reward. Maybe your child did something really, really challenging and you're like, oh man, you did so great with that. You worked so hard with that. Let's use a squirt of sour spray. I love sour spray. Some children definitely are averse to sour spray at first. So we recommend, you know, maybe squirting it on their fingers so they have control and they can put it into their mouths when they're comfortable using something like a Z-Vibe. If you do a little squirt on the Z-Vibe, which we'll link in the description as well but you can put a squirt on there and then again, let them have the control. Consistency is key with this if your child is hesitant with sour spray. So if we're a little bit more sensitive to gustatory input, then the chances of being a little bit more sensitive to this sour spray 
maybe higher, but it's still important to, co to like continue offering it and implementing it into their routine, just so that they learn to modulate and they learn to have that appropriate adaptive response. Yeah, so going along with that, it's great to use for kiddos who are extreme picky eaters, who dislike certain foods or textures, to so just help them build that rapport with different tastes. And then it can also be great for sensory seekers, so children who seek out certain flavors and certain textures. This can be a great way to give them that input that they're seeking. Yep. One more thing that we want to mention is Finding the just right challenge. We've talked about this multiple times before, but we do want to recommend that it's important to find the just right challenge when you are providing these different sensory mediums and when you are addressing these different sensory systems. We have a ton of podcast episodes on a variety of topics from Arc Therapeutic, which products we love, picky eating, meal prep, you name it. We've probably got a podcast episode on it. We will link them all in the description. So in your spare time, after you finish this YouTube video, you can listen to this. Yep. Make sure you're listening to our podcast, All Things Sensory by Heart Club. We launch a new podcast episode every Wednesday. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. We're at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. And then also make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can shoot us an email at support at harkla.co not .com, and we can help you there. You can put your comments down below and we will respond there as well. It is our goal to help you and to make your life as sensory friendly as possible. Thanks for being here and we will talk to you next week. We sound like news anchors. And now let's jump into the activities of why you're all here. <laughs>